My name is Lindsay Anderson, and I am the chairman of the event. I'd like to introduce George Westerman. George is the co-chair of the award committee, and George has put a tremendous amount of effort um, in defining the criteria for the award um, and also in leading the team. And he is also the co-author of The Real Business of IT, How CIOs Create and Communicate Value. Without any further ado, let me introduce to you to George Westerman. So hi everybody, uh, you know, Lindsay talks about how much work this is. I need to say also how much fun this is um, to meet such amazing CIOs that go through this award process and also to work with some tremendous volunteers. Uh, so first of all, uh, let me just say the award's now in its seventh year. Um, it really is honoring CIOs who lead their organizations to deliver value in exceptional ways. And it's really about leadership. It's also about innovation. And more and more, it's about this concept that we call the CIO Plus. This is the idea of CIOs who start off by leading IT and then just take on more and more responsibilities outside of IT because they're just that good. And uh, I think that our finalists, as, as I introduce them in a minute, you'll see what I mean about exemplifying all three of those. Um, but first of all, let me just talk about, you know, working with the team here. It's just, it's just exceptional. And I want to recognize some people uh, for all the hard work they've put in. Uh, first of all, the awards committee. Uh, Co-chair is uh, Sudhir Desai. Um, who uh, work on this. Mike Johnson actually founded the award how many years ago? Several, Several years ago <laughs> and has been part of the award process ever since. Um, so another Mike there. Uh, also Ray Chang who was the, the chair for a while and now is, continues to help out uh, after having been through that. And of course, Lindsay, in your role as chair, uh, really love everything you've done for the group. So thank you. Uh, we had just an amazing, amazing set of applicants. Uh, this is the best year I can remember in the five years I've been involved. And I think, Mike, you would probably say in the, the, the hundred years you've been involved in this. Um, it, uh, the amazing difference in terms of numbers and also in terms of accomplishments. Uh, it's, it's really been just a pleasure to work here. Um, we had we went through a three-year, a three-phase judging process here, and so I want to recognize some of the judges involved for all the hard work they did. In the first round, a dedicated group of volunteers reviewed each application. Three different people saw each application. We went through and took the large number and brought them down to a smaller number of semifinalists. Uh, it was tough, but then the process only got tougher. Um, round one judges. Any round one judges here? So Naeem's here, David, a couple other people. So thank you for that. Who's over there? Oh, hi, Papa David. Good, good, thank you. Round two, uh, we took the small set of semifinalists. We had five CIOs, all of whom were finalists or winners of previous years in the competition. And we also had Mike as our institutional knowledge. And uh, they went through a process and narrowed this down. They were supposed to narrow this down to four finalists. We ended up with five. That's how hard it was. So second round judges, anybody here? Scott, you're here, Mike. OK, great. Thank you. And in the third round, uh, we interviewed each finalist. And I got to say, first of all, I love the fact I was chair. So I got to be part of the interviews without having to make this decision. Um, that was a nice situation to be in. Um, but second of all, every time we did an interview, we were like, uh-oh, what are we going to do now? They're so darn good. And that, that's kind of every single time we did an interview was that way. So at the end of five, I got to sit back and say, OK, your job, you figured this out, right? And that was really nice. So we had, uh, Lindsay was part of that. <clears throat> Ray was part of that. And where are you? Irving was part of that. And so they had a tremendously tough job, and they found a way to make it work. So thank you. So now let me, let me introduce the finalists. And we'll go in alphabetical order here. Um, 
Um, I just want to tell you about these five people. Uh, first of all, Thaddeus Arroyo. Uh, he's CIO for Thaddeus. Just hi. He's CIO for AT and T. He's responsible for information technology, but a lot more than that. He oversees all the systems for all the business units, all the global com compute and storage services, not only for AT and T but also for their customers. Um, he is also responsible for digital pro properties and digital capabilities across. Um, now, if you think about the leadership and the innovation side, um, he transformed the IT to be much more business focused and, and to build up additional skills in there. But then he took it to the, um, the, the innovation side, transform retail. And I got to say, I used to be miserable walking into an AT&T store, absolutely miserable. Uh, and he's, uh, that has just helped turn that into something that's completely different, mobile enabled. And, and these people, they, they have the information they need. They're constantly learning from the process. But then he took that and ran it to the field force and fixed the field force. Then he took on digital. Now he's doing cloud. Uh, in addition from just the leadership side, he's kind of trying, trying to help the AT&T towards its vision for 2020 of being 80% digital. And he's helping to walk through that side. So leadership and innovation, very impressive work that, that Thaddeus has done. Okay. So thank you. <clears throat> uh, Dieter Haban. Also, I got to say, PhD, Dr. Dieter Haban. So we, we doctors have to hang out together a little bit, right? Um, responsible for the entire Daimler trucks of North America, uh, IT systems networking, overall arching strategy. Uh, Dieter transformed IT. And what's really interesting about what Dieter did, on top of making IT work better, really paid a lot of attention to skills. How do we make sure we get the right people in the right jobs so they can do the best they can? He talks about Einsteins and Edisons. Some people are great at inventing but not executing. Other people are great at executing but not inventing. We're going to find the right places for them. But then from the innovation side, um, this is totally cool, right? If you, you know the check engine light in your car? It goes on and you're like, uh-oh, what do I do, right? If you drive a commercial truck, this is a real problem because do I take my truck off the road and not make money or not? When this check light, engine light goes off, you call the call center. There's a group of engineers who have all of your diagnostic equipment, all your diagnostic information from your engine right there. They tell you whether to come in today or whether to come in in a week. And if you come in today, they got the part ready for you and the service bay ready for you right now. That's a neat use of IOE, and that's happening now with these trucks on the road now. So kind of neat stuff. And it'll extend to car cars and other things as we go on from there. So Dieter, thank you. Uh, next up, Andy Karabudis uh, from Dell. Great. <laughs> so Andy is Vice President and CIO for Dell. Um, she really is responsible not only for managing IT, but also for helping to change how Dell works as, as, a, as a set. Um, and transforming IT, um, she has been able to really break down the barriers between IT and the business to the point where really you can't tell who's who, and that's kind of the way you want to be there. But then in terms of innovation, um, she, one of the things she did was create an analyst workbench. The idea was that IT and contractors were supporting marketing in many different ways to help them with the analytics, and she said, let's fix that. And so with this analytics workbench, what they did is they created a situation where the marketers can do it themselves, where things that used to take weeks or months now take hours. And the marketing people can do it themselves. They can discover new opportunities. They can launch them quickly. And they know whether those opportunities are working within hours, within days, completely transforming that relationship and also breaking down these walls. The other thing Andy do is doing that's really neat as far as transforming the company, everybody in IT understands the concept of enterprise architecture. And that tends to be, we love it to be business focused, but it not, isn't always. Andy and the vice chair of the company. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Andy and the vice chair of the company are doing business architecture of the business. And they're trying to figure out how Dell's going to look different and, and drive it forward. So Andy, thank you. Uh, Steve Neff. <laughs> Steve, I just, you know, you're not a CIO, you're the CTO. I don't know what you're doing in this group. 
Uh, but as Steve, <laughs> as Steve explained it, uh, Abby Johnson, who runs the company, wanted it to be a CTO, and he wasn't going to argue with it, right? So, um, so Steve's uh, enterprise CTO for Fidelity, um, and he has he has this IT responsibility over all the different business units. Um, so he's got a really tough job because Fidelity is a lot of different independent business units that don't necessarily like the idea of headquarters and don't necessarily like the idea of synergies. They do really well on their own, thank you. And Steve is still managing to drive synergies across those units. And, um, and so in, in terms of fixing IT, not only did he improve IT services, but he's also managed to, to, to um, take technology. It's one of the four strategic corporate pillars of the company, which is kind of neat. It's, it's you know, the idea of using strategic technology best. In addition to that, from the innovation side, uh, they now have these synergies starting to emerge. Infrastructure as a service started in one unit, it's now everywhere. Um, internal cloud, it's now everywhere, out of the central place. Um, data, process sharing, not a natural thing for Fidelity, it's happening. And they've got an innovation center that continues to do this totally cool stuff and then roll it out into organizations. Um, so Steve has, has been able to manage these synergies across a very complex organization, but in addition, he now is, is in a in a process of looking 10 years out to figure out how will Fidelity be different in 10 years and how can we start to make that happen. So Steve, thank you. And last but not least, Rebecca Rhodes. Rebecca, you know, this being at the back of the alphabet, I'm a Westerman, right? This is never any fun, right? <laughs> um, Rebecca Rhodes, President of Global Business Services at Raytheon and CIO. Um, She's named CIO in, in April 2001 and became the head of global services last year? There you go. I promise you. I promise you I had exactly one drink tonight. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna move over here now, right? Um, so, Rebecca has transformed IT, taken eight companies, put them together and operating as one, having not started as an IT person, having run a business unit and have got the joy of running IT. I'm not sure that was a happy thing, but she did it and she made it work, okay? Uh, having done that, having improved service delivery, she went on now. So recently one of the things they did is looking at every single rollout they do and learning from it so that every rollout they do better the next time, and they've been in through 40 go-lives in a row now without an incident, without a big incident, right? So that, that's, that's huge. Um, now, on the, on the innovation side, not only have they been doing analytics to kind of, for example, figure out why does this part cost $10 here and $100 there, and they're fixing that. But in addition, they put the analytics together with 3D virtual reality so now they can figure out how things are going to fit together from the design process. So one of the things they found, for example, is the parts fit together great in the schematics, but when you look at them in 3D with virtual reality, there was a wire harness that was going to rub up against a piece of equipment and break every month or two. And they were able to fix that before the, they charged the government for new harnesses every month. And so that's kind of a neat thing, right? So that's, that's neat. But the other innovation or leadership, whatever you want to call it from Rebecca, is the idea of saying, we've done great things in IT, what else can we do? And so Rebecca to get, put together the story for Global Business Services, which is the shared service for the company to do what IT's already done in other things like supply chain, like HR, like finance. Now you told me you've done this now, what, you did it four times in a row before it was finally accepted? Yeah. But it was finally accepted, and now she runs all shared services for Raytheon, and has continued to add these things in and, and put that professionalism and that performance into all kinds of things. So Rebecca, thank you. So I, I, I am just so pleased to be able to recognize these five finalists, and I think you understand how incredibly hard it was to choose a winner out of here. Um, the committee met, there was only a little bit of fist fighting, most of it was actually pretty genial, right? 
and, and, we, and we were able to come to finally a choice for a win. Um, but first, before we do this, can I just have one more round of applause for all five for our finalists? As luck would have it, we have last year's winner here, Scott. Yes. And we're gonna he's gonna present the, the, the award. You want me to read and you just hand out? Okay, there you go. Um, by the way, these things I've been knocking all over the ground, these are the finalist things to hang on your wall, okay? Um, one has broken glass now, but you know we'll deal They're with very that. heavy, by the way. <laughs> so let me just make sure the name's on right on here. The envelope, please. There we go. Good. Well, let's unscrew this up. <laughs> and now, uh, the winner of the 2014 MIT Sloan CIO Leadership Award is uh, Thaddeus Arroyo. Congratulations. <laughs> So that is, you have some words yeah. you want to share? I, I do, but okay, great. See, I have to tell you, they really wouldn't tell us in advance, and, and, uh, and it's true, so I'm going to have to socially source some uh, comments here for you. <laughs> and, and interestingly enough, I, uh, I thought I would use some of the same dynamic technology that we all rely on to transform business uh, and, and use some of our own technology. So what, it's, what this is based on now in the comments that, that hopefully I can share with you is some of the social sentiment frankly, that, that's on the tip of your mind and, and you haven't even expressed externally. And, and whether it hits it or not, we'll determine afterwards uh, with some deep analytics. But, but in all seriousness, uh, I'm honored to, uh, to receive the award tonight. Uh, I did make some comments uh, just simply on my iPad, so definitely nothing uh, sourced from the cloud. Uh, and, and I'm really, uh, I'm especially honored though, considering the outstanding achievements of, of the other uh, nominees. Uh, and, and frankly, I'm humbled by this recognition uh, when I reflect on, on some of the outstanding innovators uh, who've received this award in previous years, uh, they come from companies that are not only surviving, but thriving through innovation. And I, I want to say thank you also, though, to the, to the employees and leadership at AT&T who've embraced this transformation challenge time and time again, not just in integration, but in changing our, our business and embracing new opportunities. And this is the reason why I'm really here tonight. Uh, we have, though, I think if you look across all of us and across every industry, we've wit witnessed some dramatic change, uh, and frankly, change that is only continuing to accelerate thanks to changes across our technology ecosystem. Business and technology cycles that used to play out over decades. When I started my career, these are things that truly played out over decades. Now roll through the marketplace in years, in some cases, even months. But interestingly enough to me, I think as technology enables more, our customers expect more. And that's exciting for me as a technology application leader. And that's kind of how I like to view what I do, whether, whether it's a business partner and how they view the potential for what we do, or it's what we do in enabling, but moving beyond enabling, but now informing strategy and, and managing disruption and becoming disruptors ourselves and our own. But fortunately, I think that we as technology leaders today, we have more tools than ever before. Uh, and, and interestingly enough, those tools are, are already there out there in consumable formats so that we can apply them to new customer experiences and create competitive advantage very rapidly. And we can do this while enhancing business velocity, while increasing business velocity as we drive this change. 
And yet the challenge remains the same for all of us, and is that how do we apply this technology in ways that, that transform business processes and even transform market offerings while deepening that relationship that we have with our customers, whether that's a business customer or a consumer directly. Uh, and this really, I think if you look at this, this allows us now to meet our customers uh, in different places, and it allows us to meet them when and where they want us to meet them. And interestingly enough, it allows us to move faster than ever before. And through my lens, and I say this through my lens, and that's this transformational challenge that we're all called to address, regardless of where in this system that you, you happen to support uh, this transformation. And now that customers are more connected, we, knew more, we know more about them than we've ever known in the past. And we can meet them in these new places now, and with that information at hand, and with that insight at, ha at hand, deliver experiences they didn't even know they wanted. And the key here, though, is this effective capture analysis of information and extending it in relevant context to all the digital and, oh, maybe that's this, the digital and, uh, uh, it was, it was the wireless interference, apparently, <laughs> but, uh, but it, and drive it to the, all the digital and, frankly, the physical channels of your company. And since we understand the magnitude of this opportunity, and I think we all agree with that, being strategic is no longer just optional. Customers and business partners expect insight-driven, empowered, effortless experiences, and they expect us to help them deliver that. And frankly, whether we help them deliver that or not, uh, the marketplace expects that and it, and it rewards that with success of a business. And, and the success stories of tomorrow, though, I think if I look at the success stories of tomorrow, will be built by many of those in this room. And I can tell you honestly, I, it is what keeps me excited to stay in this industry, to watch Watch what emerges here uh, as we apply these technology in new ways and look forward to seeing many of those from many of those participants here uh, in the room today. So again, thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, so congratulations again, Thaddeus, uh, on the award. And I, I just want to come back to the, the five finalists again. You know, this, we were looking for people who are tremendous leaders, who are tremendous innovators, and who represented this CIO Plus. And, you know, as I look across the, the five finalists, you know, the, the theme of this year was lead your digital enterprise forward. And every single one of our finalists could have fit that beautifully. So uh, once again, let me just congratulate everybody in the room on, on the, on the, on the